of the cloud. And uh, just to revisit again, we're Bloomington North Rotary and we're thrilled today to have Gavin Everett speaking with us about the Black and Brown Festival of Bloomington, Indiana. And I, I just gave him a soft uh, introduction, but I'd like to turn it over to Gavin. And Gavin, tell us a little bit about yourself and how this project got started. For sure, thank you, Gabe. Um, so at the time when we started the program, I was on the Commission for Hispanic and Latino Affairs here for the city of Bloomington. Um, I served on that commission for several years and was the chair of it uh, as we approached Black and Brown Arts Festival. Um, so generally what I was gonna do for today, I'm gonna kind of give you a whole, like who, what, when, what, how the whole process began. And um, it was myself and a gentleman named Rafi Hassan, who at the time in 2018 was the director for the city's safe and civil program. Um, and I was serving on the Commission for Hispanic and Latino Affairs. And um, <clears throat> we also partnered with Sean Starowitz at the time, who was the associate director for the arts here for the city. Um, Josefa Luce, who was our uh, Latino outreach program coordinator and still is working for the city under Beverly Calendar Anderson at the Community Family and Resource Department, uh, all of course under Mayor John Hamilton. So we, uh, <clears throat> one day I was, working on the commission. In fact, um, I guess I might even say why I was on the commission, because as you can see, I'm not Hispanic or Latino, but um, I am from Houston, Texas. And when I moved to the Midwest about 20 years ago here in Bloomington, I noticed that we had a population of Hispanic Latino folk that were not getting good uh, representation in our community. Found we had a commission and joined it and then saw the commission really lacked uh, it, it didn't seem to have a lot of support at the time. So we all worked hard to get some events going and get some, some pull out there in the community. And one of the things that we came up with um, when I was in Houston, we had a rodeo, a livestock show and rodeo, and it was a month long. And in it, it changed curriculum in the schools. Um, students focused on, uh, I guess, the importance of the rodeo itself, the history of it, the famous people in the area that were part of this. And I thought we should have some kind of festival or event as well that did that for our Hispanic and Latino community where we could find um, you know, great ways for students to show off art, maybe have a, uh, some, some writing, some, some educational aspect of it as well to kind of highlight and showcase the culture. Um, that we don't see much of here in the community. Uh, I mentioned this to Josefa with, this, with the commission and she said, you need to speak with Rafi Hassan. So we went and had a meeting and he and I were both having the same thought. Um, Rafi wanted to do one for the African-American community and I was looking for the Hispanic Latino community. We decided to pool our efforts together and came up with an idea to have a festival that could showcase the art and culture of the African-American and Latino community here in Bloomington, um, kind of create a collaborative space, if you will, um, showcase and, and foster uh, an education and a culture. So we began the planning for that in 2018. Um, <clears throat> I would say that the, the festival started off really small, though our goal was to be big. Um, Rafi and I discussed the Atlanta Black Arts Expo and how that was a week long event where we had, you would see a day for film and a day for uh, music and days focused just on specific areas of the art and culture. Um, of course, here in Bloomington, our pool is a lot smaller so we decided to go for a one day event and we started at the Banneker Community Center. Um, we reached out and they were very accept, like open to the idea of us utilizing the space. So we took the gym and uh, turned it into an art fair for the first year. It was a four hour event, started at noon and went till 4 p.m. on a Saturday. We worked a deal with the city <clears throat> to not charge the artists a, the standard fee that they do for their art festivals. Um, it was, I think 10% is what the city would take off of any sales at these art fairs, like the Fourth Street Art Fair and things like that. 
So we, uh, we were able to talk the city into not doing that for this startup as most of the community members or most of the artists were community members and not professional musicians that were making a lot of money or professional artists who sold a lot. Um, we really wanted to showcase the community members. You know, we have IU that has wonderful facilities for art and music and dance, but in, as far as the community, we really struggled to find a space for those artists. Um, <clears throat> so we used Banneker Center and we set up like a, uh, I guess you'd say it was an art fair, uh, tabled all around the gymnasium. And we did charge a small fee for $15 for a table for the artists to be able to have a space where they could sell their goods or whatever they offered. In fact, and we partnered, I believe Gabe mentioned earlier, we partnered with the venue. Um, it was a wonderful uh, experience and they were kind enough as well, the leading up to the festival to showcase artists that would be at the festival to give them a, an extra um, avenue to showcase their art and maybe in places that they wouldn't normally be there. Uh, Griffin Realty was also another sponsor with us. And, and so what the venue and Griffin Realty also did for us was they provided scholarship money for uh, maybe people in the community who couldn't really afford the $15 table fee. So we had a good support of the community up front to begin with. And um, then we began building our, uh, I guess you would call it the, the artists. You know, we had to get, we had to fill the place. So getting the word out was a bit of a challenge, but um, we, we kind of beat the streets and, and you know, passed the word around. And surprisingly, we had, I think, over 25 artists show up for the first festival. And uh, it was really kind of eye-opening because we had artists like Joel Washington, who you may know and is, you know, pretty well known as an artist, at least here. But I think globally, he's been all over with his art. Um, he was set up right next to a girl who was, I think 13 years old from Venezuela who would draw like from memory what she saw at the window of her bedroom on tiles and would sell those for $5 a piece. Um, you know, and her art was in no way to the level of Joel's, but they sat and talked art the, the whole time with each other about their art, and how they approach it. So we saw that there was a, you know, some of our goals that we set early with the program were happening. We were providing collaborative space for artists to share their work with each other, to discuss, um, to grow. We were able to educate people because unlike maybe other events, we didn't want it to be consumer uh, driven. Like we didn't want it to be something where the people show up and perform themselves at where the, the guests would show up and kind of consume it without taking anything away, I guess is the way to put it. We wanted there to be something that when you left, maybe you asked yourself a question or maybe you said, I didn't realize that. So we really focused, uh, you know, trying to get those experiences for people as well. Um, we spoke with members of IU community. So Baba Stafford and the African-American Dance Company was able to come and uh, perform and also lead a group performance and educate the people that were there on uh, on dance and African-American culture in the dance. Um, we, we had quite a great success in those four hours. And uh, before it was over, people were asking us, what are you gonna do next year? And so that was where we knew that we, we could actually grow this as we wanted to. Because I think, as I said earlier, we had the vision of a week long event. Um, and so now we could actually expand on that. Um, several months after the event, the uh, Waldron Art Center reached out to me and said, hey, we'd love to offer you our space for your next uh, Black and Brown Arts Festival. So we partnered with the, with the Waldron Art Center and utilized uh, much of the space there for the following year. Um, at that point, we also decided to expand and try to kind of market it into three different events. Um, I think it was Don Griffin saw me at a dinner one night and said, you know, I really love the Black and Brown Arts Festival, um, but I, I like, you know, maybe I want to have some different kind of art. Maybe I want to have a different experience. So we said we could make that happen. And it kind of fell along with the, with the progression. So uh, I have some videos and we'll kind of showcase what happened. But we started off with a Tuesday block party where we shut down 4th Street uh, between College and Walnut. We rolled the city's stage out there um, right next to the Waldron Arts Center. And then we had about five bands perform for free for the community. Um, these bands all represented 
what we were looking for in the Black and Brown Arts Festival with the community. So we had, uh, let's see, we had Maddox Sando there, we had Flower Mouth, um, we had Side Hustle, Elena Escaduro, and Huckleberry Funk all performing for the community for free. It was a, um, quite, a, quite a cool thing there to see that happen. And then a few nights later, we went into the John Walter Art Center and we did a more of like classically trained artist appreciation night. So we had opera and we had spoken word. And again, Baba Stafford came and made a whole performance piece inside the center. Um, we also had a lot of the visual art on the walls as well at that time. And then Saturday, we went back and did kind of like an homage to how we start, which was the art festival with the fair where we were selling the artists could sell their art. Um, there was audience participation, um, food trucks, and and just a kind of a celebratory theme. So, um, what I'd like to do for you is kind of you know I I can tell you about it, but one of the things I did was I asked several members of our community um, from the African American community and the Hispanic and Latino community to come and do video work for us and to to kind of showcase the, the festival, how they felt it was best represented. Um, I'm not the strongest at Zoom, but I know I can share my screen. So I'm gonna do that if that's okay. If everybody would like to watch a few videos, take about five minutes of our time. That one. guys all see that was that good that work okay so that was the tuesday night block party um, where we had the five bands on stage and shut it down this one is more of a what the representative what represents for people so this one's got about three minutes for you we're not seeing this one Ah, okay, sorry, one second, let me try again. Let me try that one more time, my apologies. Is that better? Okay. For me, art means life. Art means change. Art means inventiveness, forward thinking, passion, and necessity. When I was little, around maybe nine or 10, I remember seeing this um, 
figure and it kind of moved like a predator and it was black and it had a neon blue outline around him. And I remember watching him, he was on top of the school and just the way he moved, it looked pretty cool. I've been dancing since I was like three years old and then I've performed since I was five. So I like wait a little bit until like I got to perform on a stage. I'm excited to be performing this dance in events because I like feel like people like like it a lot. And yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Eh, mi nombre es Juan Estela Miroya. Eh, llegué a Bloomington hace casi 13 años y me vine de mi país Venezuela eh, por problemas en mi país socioeconómicos. Eh, en Venezuela la universidad era pública y se paraba mucho y en ese trayecto del paro de la universidad pues aproveché para estudiar arte vitral se convirtió como en una pasión en mi vida complemento de todo el resto de estudios y todo lo demás Well, I'm a digital artist and I've been doing this for like a long time and I started doing like digital art in about like middle school and My biggest inspiration is like I love concept art, video games, and stuff. So like it actually started off drawing like anime. Nowadays, with Native Americans being overlooked, I would say like Native Americans are the minorities of minorities. A lot of times throughout um, uh, schools and education, we're not even mentioned in the curriculum. Also, really speaks to Americans to get mentioned, making sure that everyone in the community, artists and people of color alike, feel like they're welcome here and they're a part of like the larger culture here. Well, this festival provides a platform that um, not in other states, other cities. So uh, I truly appreciate it. The Black and Brown Festival is necessary. The Black and Brown Festival should be supported with your presence, right? And your body showing up. Go and support local art in your community. See what folks are doing. See what art is coming into the community. Go out. Even if you can't go yourself, sponsor someone else. Okay. So I think, honestly, most of the speakers in that video do a much better job of saying what the festival really is about than I can put into words. But watching that does kind of, you know, it speaks to what the festival meant and means for people in the community. Um, and it is a place for people to get some, some great opportunities for uh, community members like myself to learn but as well for the members of our community that are the artists to showcase and to think to get that representation. Um, so yeah, we did that in 2019. I have uh, some, I have some pictures from the, the festival that we did inside the Waldron Center, but I don't have video for that. Um, but I don't know, we could show that later. Um, but I was gonna say, if anyone had any questions, I understand somebody was working on something Uh, if there's any any questions you had about how we how we did this or or kind of the approach, but yeah. So, you know, um, one of the you know Rotary uh, in the United States is always looking for initiatives and ways to be more inclusive, and um, it does have a reputation of being very male and very pale, and you know a lot of the times we feel like we put ourselves out there to be available and we don't get a response. Um, and so we sort of move on to the next project. But, you know, if we wanted to be more in communication with, um, with uh, uh, particular groups, uh, what's, what's, what's the way to do that? Do you, is it boards and commissions? Is it, you know, is there a local index? That's a, that's a great question. I think, I think absolutely first, yeah. Um, commissions and boards are a great way to show um, an interest. And I think as well, action has to be behind that with intent. Um, it's one thing to go and be on, sit on a board to get your name there. So people say, hey, this person's doing, they're involved with this, but you have to really have an intent, an intent behind what you're doing and, and a sincerity. Um, You know, if you're saying how can how could say the Rotary Club, how can we get a better um, representation in our in our grouping? You know, it, there has to be a, a genuine sincerity and a trust there. Um, 
and and as well, you know, you have to have a space. Part of uh, part of our problem in Monroe County that we see a lot is that we cannot retain talent when it comes to people of color. And that's because in many cases, we don't have a space for those individuals where they feel that they belong um, or that they can be themselves. So part of you know what we were doing with Black and Brown Art Festival was trying to make more spaces become available for our community members so that maybe they're not running and going to Indianapolis every weekend or Chicago every weekend to get that fulfillment that maybe we can be a city or a community that provides that. Um, of course, you know, I can only do so much as you were kind of commenting the, the male and pale aspect, you know, I can help facilitate there being a space, but at the end of, at the, end of the day, it's not my space to fill, right? Um, and so, like I say, the, it has to be with intention that you're doing things so that people can see, oh, this is, this is why. And, and you can't be, a, you know, there's no, you, you can't be afraid to have those critical conversations and, and to, uh, to approach topics that are uncomfortable. So, um, but yeah, I think that doing things like, like these events are, are stepping stone. I always said, people said, why'd you do uh, the music and the art? And I said, well, that's one of the most understandable cultural things. Pretty much everybody has the ability to digest art or culture and learn like food would be the next thing, right? You could do a food festival that speaks to food all over this, that's culturally uh, like a diverse cultural experience. But art, you know, you can take in art for three hours where it's hard to take in food for three hours, so. How many, um, how many festivals have happened since this started and when do they normally take place? So the festival was set to be in the summertime, we did it in May after graduation for the first two years. Um, and that was primarily because we, I, I, I worked on the commission for the city of Bloomington and there's a gown in town divide that they always talk about. And really what I was trying to do was I, we were just trying to really get the community members engaged. I knew if we did it in the school year, we'd have unlimited amount of students saying, I can do this, I can do that. So we were looking for community members. Um, so for the first two we did, in May and then 2020 came around and everything got shut down that year and we were set at that point I was <laughs> when we were when you and I were speaking on this Gabe I pulled up my notes um, because I had all my notes for the 2020 year and it was going to be outstanding you know we had Switchyard Park coming online and we had all this extra funding for it um, but COVID stopped that and then um, I stepped off the commission and stepped back. And since it was run by the Commission on Hispanic and Latino Affairs, I was not involved with the planning for the 2021. Um, I did later get asked to, you know, kind of come on board and just help with some artist liaison work necessarily. But um, it is now moved, I believe it's going to be moved this year to sometime during the fall. Um, like I said, I'm not in the commission, so I don't have the direct planning on it. But I would, I would hope that they'll, you know, still ask if I want to be a part of it because it was a really fun experience. Um, but yeah, we did it in the, in the summertime originally, so we do it outdoors. So. If, um, if you could wave a magic wand and have a resource appear or a, you know, a, a, you know, a vision come true about how, how it's executed or, or the look of it or, or how it succeeds. Um, what, would that, what would that look like? Um, I think, well, first, you know, support through community uh, engagement, having more artists getting representation and it becoming something that, um, I think there was an, art, an artist that spoke to it who was, said there's nothing like this in the States in another state around here or cities. And that individual drove from uh, Missouri to come to the festival. Because originally it was the Bloomington, just community members, but this individual had found out about it and had planned on coming for months. And like, we even said to him, we said, you do realize you're, you're driving a long way. We cannot, we can't pay you for your travel. You know, and he said, y'all are the only gig in town, <laughs> pretty much what he said. So um, what I'd like to see is it would, it would grow to, a, um, you know, almost a week long event where there could be days where it's focused on specific art form and that perhaps it was a, something that people would come to Bloomington to experience as well. 
um, you know, make it some kind of, I don't know, a launching off point for potential community artists who don't get the experience and opportunity from uh, Jacob School of Music or the African American Arts Institute. Um, Cause if they're not students, they don't get the, they don't get those resources. So ultimately it would be one of those things where it would be a resource for community members to grow their own experience. Well, any other questions for Gavin? I, uh, per usual, I feel like I'm hogging the microphone, but I do like to ask questions. No. Nah. It's because you ask great questions, Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it on your faces. <laughs> Have you all ever looked at partnering with like Cardinal or a BPP or any of those to perhaps do performing arts, them, them coordinating plays at the same time um, in that genre? That, that actually was discussed and I believe that you know as 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 this started in 2018 it, and then we only, we only got two years going before we had to take a year off it, it really the brakes got pumped a bit and but the momentum was there and there was definitely a conversation I was having I, I had some connections there with the BPP um, and we were looking at you know how could we expand people were coming to us saying hey when it's next year can we have it at this can you do something at our location um, we'd love to see something here. Uh, there was a great amount of excitement about it. Um, and so I'm hoping to see that, you know, the city uh, has the resources again next year or this year, I guess now to kind of push it back up to where it was going. So, but yeah, those, those other, other community organizations and uh, groups. In fact, you know, one of the things I was, you know, talking the other day, actually last night about things that I was I was proud about with this festival that I kind of forgot about because I was you know reading through all the notes but the individual that made the video that we watched both of those um after that video got released he made that video for the Tuesday night event he had it made and edited and sent to me in an hour and a half I was still at the bar with Sean Starwitz having a beer after taking the stage apart on Tuesday night and I get the message with that video so I posted it on Facebook and the next day the mayor's office was calling me saying, who is this person? And they offered him a job as the digital communications guy. Um, but he turned it down and is now in California. He's now out in LA as a director of photography for movies. So he's, uh, he was able to find his passion and, and went for it. Um, there's an organization on campus, the Black Arts Coalition, that I think was kind of spawned out of the Black American Arts Festival, because all of a sudden there were artists that could say, hey, you're an artist and I'm an artist and, and, you, and you're black and I'm black and they, they, let's start, let's, let's get something together here. Um, and so that was really exciting because I got to go to a few of those initial meetings just to kind of see what was going on with it. And it, it it's, uh, the, the, the community needs things like this, you know, and I don't know if Rotary has something like this on the, on the docket that you're working on, but you know, anytime you can do this where we include our community and especially those that don't get included, um, it does big things, you know, it's powerful, so. Well, Ryan, I think you, I, I'm sorry, Gavin, I was, I was looking at Ryan Zarecki, um, but Gavin, you, you present yourself as an ally very, very well. And I never wanted to presume, I, you know, Gavin Everett was not the most Latin name I'd ever heard, but I knew that you were, <laughs> were no, strongly I'm... associated with it. And, you know, again, I'm, I mean, you, you serve as a great example as uh, how we can be here um, and, and be allies to, to presentations like this. Right. It's, it's something that, you know, it's important to, I grew up, my parents are both British. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm as white as it comes, honestly, but I was raised in a home where my mother did volunteer work. And so I always went with her wherever she went. And so I recognized early that everybody's life is different and we all have, we all have good things and we all have bad things. And, um, you know, we, everyone's just trying to make the best they can. And, um, so for me, uh, you know, it's important to see people get representation. Our communities are stronger, um, better, just it's a, it's a better life for everybody when everybody gets their voice at the, to be heard and like gets a seat at the table and, the, and, and, and the representation's there. And it's, it's great that, you know, yes, we, we can be allies. We have to recognize how far we can go 
like I say, you know, we can help facilitate a space, but then we need to make sure we don't fill that space. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, you know, doing the right thing. So, but, and I, and I, I really am grateful, Gabe, for you to uh, reach out to me. I haven't ever spoke about the festival to, or to anybody because um, I don't really, I don't advertise it. I don't, I don't walk around and try to, you know, I just, it was a good thing to do. We should do it and we should do more of those things. So. Well, yeah, I, you know, having participated in it at, a, at one time, I was thoroughly impressed by it. And it's something as a project I thought had legs and clearly the people around it had, as you said, intentionality um, and they made it go very well. So um, when we get back to meeting in person, I'd love for you to come uh, as a guest and and just casually talk with us a little bit more about it and how we can have direction. We have out, you know, um, we have members of our club who are strongly engaged with communities in Mexico and in Cuba. Um, we have, we do a lot of uh, uh, projects, food related uh, in other communities outside of the United States. I mean, we, Rotary is multifaceted between an international presence, a national presence, and then a local uh, and and that trifecta is kind of always in play. So, but I, I, I could see you being a good guide to giving us some great ideas. So thanks so much for being with us here today. Um, and I think, you know, this brings us to a pretty natural conclusion spot. So um, any, any other comments or questions or anything for the good of the cause from the group? All right, very cool. Well, Gavin, again, thank you so much um, uh, for lending us your voice today. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll work to get you to sit down at lunch with us once we get back yeah. to meeting in person, which uh, should be in the near future. Thank so, you. Sounds great. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Gavin. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, fellow Rotarians, you all have a, an excellent day. And um, uh, I'll, be, I'll, I'll send out some announcements about our future meeting schedule. Um, I think we've had some positive impact. So um, all right. Take care. Good day.